Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another ThinkPad going down the nostalgia lane. I love these machines, I gotta say. So here uh, we are looking at uh, might be, what might be, for me at least, the um, second most iconic series of ThinkPads um, from me for nostalgia purposes. I think the number one for me is probably the ThinkPad 600 series, um, which I don't have. I would love to do a video on. Maybe one day we'll get one here to show off. But um, this is, uh, I think, where, where things really started to, to, to come back uh, for me for from a nostalgia purposes. And this is the ThinkPad T410. So again, this is the second generation of Lenovo's ThinkPad line where they kind of rebranded and this is the first generation Core i uh, processor lines. So we've taken a look at a couple of other ThinkPads recently uh, that are within this generation period. Um, but what makes these pretty popular is this was in that kind of, I don't want to say ultra ultra slim because they're not really ultra slim. But this was really in, in the form factor of being like ideal shape and size. A uh, 14 inch uh, screen and... Uh, you know, everything that goes along with it. As I mentioned, this is a first-gen Core i. So we've got four different processors possible that were standard on this. Obviously, anything within the uh, mobile. So Core i5 and i7-something-something-M processors. The four that were supported on this from Lenovo were the 520, 540, 560 and then the i7-620. They were all dual core processors from 2.4 up to 2.66 uh, gigahertz in terms of processing speed. So we'll find out when we move this up which one it is. I think, I think this is the low end, uh, but we'll find out. Graphics wise, you could have had the standard Intel HD graphics, which would have been included, right, as part of the Core i uh, marketing or uh, the design philosophy, or you could have had discrete graphics. So they were actually on the T410, there were actually two different models available. They were both the Quadro NVS 3100M, but they were available in a 256 and a 512 megabyte capacity. And uh, then, as I mentioned, you had the 14 uh, inch TFT screen in here as well. And that was available in two sizes, shapes, whatever you want to call it. So there was a low end uh, 1280 by 800, and then there was a 1440 by 900 WXGA. Uh, plus screen. You had a built-in camera and the Think Light, uh, which was standard on these things, as always. Your traditional, well not traditional, but you had your seven row keyboard on here. No backlight. Backlight didn't come until I think three generations after this. The T430 uh, had the backlight keyboard available. And then, you know, pretty much every T-series after that and almost every ThinkPad now uh, in the latest generations has an option to get backlit keyboards now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, me uh, memory wise you've got uh, two dims available so you've got uh, one in the back and then one underneath the keyboard they're pretty easy to access on these sy systems one of the things that's great about thinkpads is they're really generally very easy to get into things and generally easy to service so the maximum memory capacity with the standard thinkpad bios is eight gig uh, which is two four gig uh, ddr3 sodium sticks there are obviously some third-party options available uh, that if you do some research you can find out about that you can be able to change the BIOS that comes on this and that allows you to have some additional advantages to be able to do more than the standard. But 8 gig is pretty pretty good for an older, uh, an older processor anyways. Storage-wise, you would have seen a traditional like 160 to 500 gig SATA drive included with this, although... Um, during the time that these came out, uh, SSDs were starting or were out already, uh, and the flavor that ThinkPad was using for their slimline products was a 1.8 inch form factor drive. So they did have an adapter to go from 1.8 to 2.5, which would fit inside these systems and allow you to be able to get up and running with that. I've mentioned that uh, in previous uh, videos before as well. Taking a look at ports on here, let's uh, front end. You're going to have your SD card slot right here. And then when we move to the side, we've got our Ultra Bay Enhanced. Currently has a uh, multi uh, DVD multi-burner 3. You've got eSATA. You've got your mechanical 
Wi-Fi on off and then an audio port and then we've got an express card port here as well for connectivity of various options and then we've got a powered USB 2.0 port IEEE 1394 or Firewire and our Kensington lock. Moving to the rear we have a modem. This would be the last generation of ThinkPads that would have an integrated modem. So uh, when we move up to the T420, this is gone, and it's only going to be Wi-Fi and, and uh, Ethernet. We have our barrel plug, and then as you can see here, we've got our, our fan uh, exhaust here, and then again, we're going to have it on the side here. On some models, you would see this be blanked out depending on the low end. So this may be an indicator that we've got a higher end processor or a discrete graphics card that this has been included. And then on this side here, we've got our VGA art, a, uh, a Ethernet port, and then we've got a display port out and three more USB ports. And I always loved on the T410 the way that this was set up where you had just this like stack of USB ports. I can imagine you having to plug in all of your stuff if you didn't have mechanical docking available. <laughs> we'll flip over to the bottom here and take a look uh, as far as access goes. We have our hard drive access here. Uh, pretty traditional ThinkPad design. You unscrew this, pop this out of the way and the drive slides in and out. This, this uh, plate here removes easily to access the bottom memory dim and then i believe there's also an m uh there's an m sata connection here where you could hook up an additional wi-fi card perhaps maybe a lte modem for this and there is the ability on these ones to be able to use an m sata ssd so that would be a way for you to be able to set up a system that you could have m uh, ssd storage and then a uh, spinning disk for uh, additional data storage of but I believe that the M SATA on this only runs at SATA 2 speeds. So you're not going to get super fast SSD. You're just going to get it being better than a uh, standard uh, SATA drive. Uh, mechanical docking, of course, available on this one as well. The very important part of many ThinkPads, which you don't see uh, pretty much anymore today on ThinkPads. Uh, and then you've got your uh, battery that you've got the extended life battery and then there's a slimline version of this as well that just fills in the space and doesn't have quite as much uh, life available to it. So let's flip this back over. I am going to plug in power just in case because I don't remember if all of these batteries on these systems are all fully charged and we are going to boot this system up and take a look at specs. Okay, power button hit. Oh, you see that think light flash. Let's let's make sure our think light is on because it's important to be able to run that. Windows 10 will be uh, running on this system. So that when it does go to its new home, uh, its new user will be able to actually use it and not have to worry about going online and being immediately hacked and having their uh, data taken over for their schoolwork or employment uh, learning or whatever it is that they're going to be doing on this machine for the next couple of years of its second life. Once Windows is finished loading in, we will pop up the task manager and I'll quickly just confirm the processors that are on here. Based on the stickers on the keyboard, it, it does have an i5 sticker on it, so I'm going to assume it actually is an i5 processor. As I say, I think it might be the 520M. I don't know for sure uh, based on how quickly I was getting these systems cleaned up. Uh, there are quite a few of them that I was working on and I wanted to get them ready to go. Yeah, so I'm, I am right. I am correct. This is a M520 or i5-520M, depending on where it's written, the way Windows is looking at it, the way Intel would uh, put it down there. Four gig of memory. Two two gig sticks in here again it can go up to eight and then the storage device on here is just a 300 it'd be a 320 this may actually be one of the original drives uh, that was included on some of the systems that i received so this is a 320 gig 7200 rpm 2.5 inch sata hard disk drive again you could put in a uh, ssd into here as well and then you could also have i mentioned the option that you do have some m sata a 1M SATA, I believe, connection in there that you could be able to take advantage of that isn't currently being used by what would have been a 
Qualcomm Gobi LAN card. I want to. I think if I've got the right information here, <clears throat> would have been would have been uh, a, a possible option on this as well. Yeah. Uh, graphics wise, because we don't see it here, I'm pretty sure that this does not have. I'm pretty sure that this does not have a. Discrete graphics card. We'll double check here on Device Manager. Sometimes Windows doesn't necessarily report a discrete GPU in the Task Manager. So we'll just quickly go to the Device Manager here and pop open the display adapters that are in here. Oh, and it does. Well, what do you know? Uh, I should be putting hardware info on these things now to once again, like I've done in the past, to be able to see what's going on with these. So this does have the NVS 3100M. Um, I don't know here whether it's got the 256 and the 512, but obviously having a discrete graphics card is a boon for capability within this system. Yeah, so a nice little machine ready to go. Oh, and the last thing we want to do again is check to see what the graphics is. This is the lower end of the two possible screens. So while being 14.1 inches, it is the 1280 by 800 resolution screen instead of the 1440 by 900 so a little bit lower end in terms of the graphics capability overall a great machine for somebody who's going to be doing some schoolwork or whatever getting back into employment and needing to do some some online education uh just needing a laptop and you know a lot of people not having a lot of cash right now um wanting to be able to take advantage of that so uh machines ready to go i uh Hope you enjoyed taking a look, a little stroll down memory lane, maybe if you had a T410 uh, in the past, and uh, enjoy taking a look at this machine and, and everything that might have done for you. Uh, if you do have any uh, memories of this machine, especially if you've got uh, ideas in terms of modding and upgrades, um, I know with the T420 and the T430, they're very popular. I'm not sure if the first gen Core i machines are as popular for this type of stuff, but let me know in the comments down below if you know of um, a market for these, like where people are using these for uh, the 410s and uh, if there's any interest there. I know for parts, um, certainly, right, the keyboards are generational, they, they can be used for parts to upgrade newer generation machines, but just specifically getting a 410 if, if there's a whole bunch of upgrades and features that you can be able to take advantage of as opposed to just getting a T420 or a T430 instead. As always, you know, during these crazy times, I hope you're staying safe and staying healthy and we will catch you in the next one.